Hey everyone, Brian with Short Circuit of Brewers. Today I'm going to do a review on the Blickman Quick Carb. So Blickman has come out with a product that will allow you to force carbonate your beer in the keg through a pump system with an air stone and a T. And according to the product literature that I've got, it says it'll do it in one hour. Now I've already used the product once, actually twice, um, and it does what it says it does. There are a few little tips and tricks that I'll give you, but um, as the video says, is it worth the price? So we're going to explore that and see if we can't come up with an answer to that. So in the box, you get a uh, DC pump which I'm assuming it's some kind of a diaphragm pump. I'm not going to take it apart because that voids the warranty. But it comes with a pump. It comes with a power supply for the pump. Um, just has a uh, connection for that. There's no switch or anything. Um, it also comes with a couple of hoses. It comes with the T with an air stone in it, which is a pretty healthy air stone. One quick note on that. Do not touch that with your bare skin because the oils in your skin will clog that. Um, and then it does not work as effectively as it should. So there's that. Um, comes with both uh, ball lock in or out and in fittings. A um, couple hoses, they're already made up with the swivel barbs on them. Um, everything goes together nicely. Um, and we will jump into assembly on this and then I'll show you how to sanitize it and then we'll actually look at using the product on a full keg. Uh, I've got some brown ale that I need to carbonate up, so we'll dive right in and dissect everything and take a look at how it works. Okay, so first things first, we're going to assemble the product. And we don't need the ball lock fittings on there at that point because we do have to do a sanitization and that requires you to remove those items. So we're gonna start out with the pump itself. And there's a small little fitting that actually attaches to the T, and that part needs to go on the motor first. So we're going to put that on there, and slide it all the way up the bar real tightly. And then one thing I can tell you is that these hose fittings, the hoses on here and these, these barbs, you've got to tighten the crap out of it because it will leak. This pump does put out quite a bit of pressure, so if you don't tighten these down real well, it will leak, so don't be too worried. I mean, obviously you want to do it by hand, but you know, as far as actual tightening of it, you want to make sure it's as tight as you can possibly get it by hand without breaking anything. So then, you know, I'm going to tighten down, and this is another leak point here too, where this, uh, where the um, air stone goes in. This you want to tighten it down as hard as you can by hand as well. Same thing here. Um, you're going to attach the T to the bottom of the pump itself. And again, that, you know, tighten that down as, as best you possibly can by hand. Um, those are some leak points that can happen. Um, so there's that. And then once you get done with that, then you are going to attach your hose that goes to the out on your keg. Same thing with this. You're going to definitely want to get in there and... Tighten it down as much as you possibly can. Same thing. All right, so then you're going to take your hose that actually returns the beer back to the keg, um, which would be your outlet from the end of the T. Again, another leak point. Tighten it down as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, this stuff all has to be tight because you're running. You're going to be running anywhere from 14 to 17, 18 psi through all this. So I mean, you're, you've got you've got to make sure everything is tight because it does have not only pressure from the pump but also pressure from your CO2 tank. So everything is assembled. We've got our hoses on here. Um, this hose actually will connect to the the barb end on the or the uh, the pipe fitting end of the air stone, um, and I'll tighten it down with a wrench. So now at this point, we've got all three of the hoses on there. We've got the one that comes out of the keg. We've got the one tightened up and attached that goes into the air stone T. And then we've got the hose that's going to go out into the in part of your keg. 
So at this point, I'll get everything tightened up real good and then we'll go about sanitizing it. All right, so everything is tightened down. Uh, everything's good to go. So what uh, Blickman says to do is you're gonna take, and I've, I've prepared uh, a solution of star sand in this pitcher here. So what they say to do is you're gonna take all of the hoses, you're gonna place all of the hoses into the bucket or whatever container you've got your uh, sanitizing liquid in. Uh, you're also gonna take your ball locks, you're gonna, your connectors, you're gonna drop those in there so everything gets sanitized all at the same time. Um, as you notice, I've put some towels down here. Um, this can be a somewhat of a wet process sometimes if you get a leak or whatever. I know when I first used it, I had star sand liquid all over my basement. I mean, it was crazy because one of the hoses popped out and started squirting water everywhere. It was, it was, it was pretty funny. So um, learn from my mistake. Make sure you have a towel or something around pretty close by so you can uh, clean up any messes that occur. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in now. And this is a self-priming pump, so you'll see it's already started to push the solution through there. So it sucked it right out of there. And so it says that you run the solution through there to sanitize it. And if you notice, there's not a lot of fluid coming through here. So one of the things that they tell you to do is you're going to take the outlet hose that's going to be going back into your keg, and you're actually going to clamp it off, and then you'll see that it's gonna force the uh, liquid, the sanitizing solution back through the hose that is your airstone hose. So I'm actually sanitizing the airstone right now and it's pushing the fluid back through there. So uh, I'm gonna let that run for a little bit, um, leave everything in there, let it sanitize up real nice, and then we'll move on to hooking up our, air so our CO2 source and then we're gonna hook it up to the keg and we're going to start the carbonation process. So I've got my keg of beer. I've got my CO2 tank with my regulator. I've sanitized the pump. So our next step is going to be attaching the hoses to not only the CO2 tank, but also attaching the fittings and attaching the hoses to the keg. So first things first, we'll take out our liquid line fitting for the line out of the keg, line into the pump, if you will. And we'll tighten that down real well. So we don't want any leaks or anything with that. So we'll tighten that down really good. And we'll go ahead and attach it to the keg. Then we've got our line out, which will be back into the inside of the keg. We'll attach that ball lock fitting. Tighten it down really good. Like I said, we're going to be running, you know, 14, 16 PSI here. So. so we'll attach that to the inlet side over here. And then we have the hose that is going to be attached to our regulator. So we'll go ahead and attach that. Tighten it down really nice and tight so we don't have to worry about any leaks there. I'm gonna back this all the way off so we don't have to overpressurize anything. But. So, go ahead and do that. Tighten that down real nice and tight. I've already tightened that fitting down there. Set this off to the side. All right, so now, um, I'm actually a little bit ahead of myself here, but that's good because it'll bring up a point. So, we don't want to circulate all of this star sand back into our keg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fitting off of our inlet into our keg and we're gonna turn the pump on and we're gonna cycle all of the uh, star sand out of the pump, bring some beer in there and uh, fill up the whole system with beer. So we'll be ready to start carbonating. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Pull this in. As you can see, the beer is starting to come through there. And we are circulating. Looks like there's a little bit of yeast in the bottom of there, but hey, that's all right, because uh, that's what happens when you put them in the keg sometimes. So, okay, so we've got beer through the whole system. And we'll grab our fitting. And you know what, before I do that, I wanna do something because 
this system is perpetuated off the of temperature um, and temperature has to do with the solubility of CO2 into the mixture of beer and that is based off of temperature and Blickman they provide a chart for you and it shows you based on the temperature of the beer how many PSI you should use for what style of beer it's all here and I'll and I'll show you a, a bigger view of that here in just a second so that is all provided by them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dispense a little bit of beer because this came out of my kegerator I'm gonna dispense a little bit of beer into that cup and then I'm gonna use my elect electric uh, or laser uh, thermometer here and see what temperature we've actually got and then that'll kind of give me an idea of what range we're going to put the CO2 at. So I'll put a little bit more beer in there and uh, we'll uh, get going from there. All right, so according to my thermometer, we've got 45 degrees uh, on the beer, which is fine. So what we'll do is we'll look at our chart, and based off of our chart, um, this is a brown ale, so it's going to be in the green area on the chart. And at 46 degrees, we are looking at roughly anywhere between 14 and 15 PSI to give us an atmosphere of 2.38 to 2.47 which is in the range for that beer so now Blickman also says that you want to go a couple of pounds over because of the losses through the system so what we're going to do is I'll it's 14 to 15 so I'm going to set it to 17 psi because in my experience you need to go maybe a, a one or two pounds of pressure beyond that um, one other tip that I can tell you too is that even though this is a pretty good volume of beer it does the temperature raises as you go so you may have to bump the pressure up just a little bit as you go along because of the losses in temperature um, while the keg is out of the keg right here. So we'll go ahead and turn on our gas and set our pressure to 17 PSI as you can see. We've already got some action over here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on our pump and you will begin to see as it comes through let me move this out of the way you'll begin to see as it comes through that there is quite a bit of foam coming out of here so what's happening is the beer is coming through the pump out of the keg into the tea and then the tea has the air stone in it and so it's aerating and, and uh, pushing CO2 into the beer mixture and then back into the keg through the inside of the keg so as you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the color from this hose to this hose well this one has the CO2 mixture in it this one has just straight beer so this is going to take an hour I'm not going to bore you guys with an hour long watching this do its thing um, also one other thing too and I didn't mention this but this comes with a pretty nifty little attachment so you can actually hang the pump on the side of your keg, which is, is fine. I mean, I've left it laying on the table, but you can do that too, but that's just for a little more tidiness. And it looks like, even though we tighten this up pretty good, we do have a little bit of a leak, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. I did see on the line somebody had a leak or thought they had a leak. I don't know for sure if it was leaking from the top. That was one of my biggest points was I had a leak at the top of this pump when I first used and I had to really tighten this up. So that's just kind of a tip, make sure that this one's really tight. Not too bad on the bottom down here, but if it's leaking up here, you'll see it dripping down at the bottom and that's what I saw in there. And so I don't know if it was leaking actually at the motor, but I saw somebody have a video and it was leaking at the motor, they said, but I don't know for sure if that was the case, so. But as you can see, you've got a really, really milky looking fluid running through here and that's from the CO2 flowing in, so. We're going to leave our CO2 tank at 17 and we'll see you in an hour.
And as you can see, we are about 40 minutes into it, and you can kind of see that the CO2 saturation has begun to equalize, and it's really not putting very much more CO2 into the mixture at this point. You see the same thing up here. Not seeing a whole lot of CO2 going into the mix. And that's because it's begun to equalize. So, we'll be back in another 20 minutes and pull some beer off of it and see where we are. All right, so it's been an hour and it is time for the moment of truth. So, let's uh, shut it off and turn off our gas. Shut off our pump, if I can find the uh, connection there. All right, and we're going to pull the liquid line off. A little bit of mess there, not too bad. And I've got a glass here, and I've also got a picnic tap. So let's see how it did. Make sure my picnic tap is off before I hook it up. a little bit of air out of here. Reduce the pressure down a little bit because we've got quite a bit of pressure in there. Dump the foam out. I think we're still dispensing at a little bit higher pressure than what I want. Dump that out. Creating a little turbulence in the glass there. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. Might have overcarbonated it just a little tiny bit. Um, my previous experience with it was that uh, whenever I let it run for the allotted amount of time at the allotted amount of pressure, um, it was slightly undercarbonated, so I had to, I just, rather, I had already cleaned it all out and everything, and then rather than hooking it back up and running it for a little longer, which I could have done, and you can do that, the Blickman says actually stop it at 45 minutes, check it to see what the carbonation level is, and then you can adjust it from there. So um, I ran it for the full hour. I bumped it up by a pound um, at about that 20 minute mark when I was showing that the CO2 was no longer going in there. but. Um, as you can see, it looks like it's very well carbonated. Um, let's have a taste. Cheers. Definitely carbonated. All right, so let's talk about one of the uses that uh, I think you can get out of this tool that is in addition to carbonating your kegs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the first thing kind of taking you back before it's beer. Um, I use cam locks in my system. So I can attach a cam lock to the T um, and then get a fitting that will be the same size as my oxygen tank, run my hose. Then when I'm running my wart through my counterflow chiller and into my fermenter, I can oxygenate that wart at the same time. Now, is that the most perfect solution for that? No, probably not. But it is another use for a tool that you bought for something else, which I'm definitely all about getting the most use out of my tools that I possibly can. And if I can use them for multiple things, that's great. All right, so one of the other things that I wanted to look at using this for is, you know, when these five gallon jugs are full of beer, this is my secondaries, um, they're about 40 or 50 pounds and they're glass, which can be a little bit dangerous. So what I've done is I actually took the pump and connected a hose to it that I can put in my secondary. And obviously you just have to follow the same thing as you would if you're doing an auto siphon. And then took the other end and one of the attachment hoses that comes with it uh, that you use actually uh, has an attachment that you hook the ball, ball lock fitting to and you could attach the pin lock fitting or whatever it is you want to do to it as well. Tighten it down um, and then I'm going to attach the 
ball lock fitting to the hose barb. Then I'm going to connect it to the in on my keg. I'm sorry, the out on my keg. And then plug it in. And this is a self priming pump, of course. So what will happen is it will start transferring the wort from your secondary, or actually the beer from your secondary, over into your keg. No heavy lifting. You can also pressurize your keg with CO2 prior to. Leave a cloth over it or whatever, and that blanket of CO2 is going to protect your beer from any kind of aeration. So that is another use. Is it as fast as a half inch auto siphon? No, probably not. But there again, it is another use for a product that you already bought that you're using for something else, and you can get multiple uses out of it. Like I said, anything I can get more uses out of than one, great. So now another thing that I can do, I have a couple of these two and a half gallon kegs, and one of the things that always was kind of a pain for me is transferring the beer in a carbonated keg over to this. You can use CO2 and push it around and you got to relieve, relieve the pressure on this one while you're pushing that one in. Then you might get some foaming, whatever. With this system and this device, I can hook a ball lock to the out, hook it to the out on this, and then come back and hook an airline to both the ends on my kegs, the large keg and the small keg. And then if I take the, the step to pre-weigh this full of liquid, could be water, doesn't have to be beer, use my scale, then I can see whenever I'm reaching a full capacity of this and actually shut it off. So for those of you that use a, a scale for your grain and whatnot, you can use it to weigh one of these small kegs and find out when you're getting near the top. Your beer never touches any air. It stays under constant CO2 pressure because when you have both the line running from the end to the end, the pressure is going to equalize between the two. So you could pressurize this keg with 10 or 14 pounds of CO2. Do the same with this. Hook up your pump, hook up the lines, transfer the beer over using the pump through the T, and you would never have any issues with any kind of aeration of your beer transferring one keg to another. Same goes for the when you're doing aeration, or even if you're transferring over here, if you want to filter the beer, put a filter in between. Um, any of these things that I'm showing you guys, if you want to see, um, see them in action, or see, they're just thoughts that I've come up with on what to do with this thing. If you want to see any of this stuff, like step by step, like especially this type setup, if you want to see a step by step on that, let me know in the comments below and I'll do another video on just that specific thing and show you how that all works. If you guys like the video um, let me know um, I think the verdict is that not only is it great for carbonating your beer I think it's good for doing all the other things that uh, we said it could do um, I am NOT a Blickman fanboy by any means um, nobody sent me this nobody paid me to do it I bought it with my own money matter of fact you know a lot of a lot of vendors are showing it's out of stock until December and you can get free shipping. I paid shipping, I paid tax, all that stuff to get the thing here just because I wanted it and I wanted to try it out. Um, Blickman makes great products. I mean, I've got a Blickman mash ton back here. Like I said, I'm not a Blickman fanboy by any means, but they do make good products and I want something that works. So I think the verdict is that it is definitely worth the money and I'll get plenty of use out of it to come. So let me know if I missed something that you guys think it could do and you know I can do another video on that or um, if you like this review and you want me to see you know see us do some more let us know 